Hi, this is Peter from the IDR team in the IDR Analytical Workflows series. I will tell you how to set up an analysis environment uh, for analyzing IDR data. So why to reanalyze IDR data? Well, have you ever wanted to find existing data to reanalyze? You will find that you might have been struggling with uh, lacking metadata and the data being too large for you to download. Um, IDR addresses just that and many more problems. Uh, uh, but uh, the question is, of course, how to reanalyze the IDR data. Your first idea might be to download them from IDR, but we store very large data and they might not fit on your local machine. And if you download them, you tear them out of the context of the metadata, which is nicely curated in IDR. Whereas if you use application programming interface for short API uh, to reanalyze IDR data, you will get all these advantages uh, I am showing now on my slide. Um, all metadata are available for you, easy to query using API. And very importantly, uh, the example workflows and analysis environments, which uh, the topic of this video are available to you and provided by the IDR team. So what workflow we suggest for you? First, to find the data uh, of interest in IDR using maybe as a lead the exploring IDR videos. Then you uh, use uh, an example repo to set up an analysis environment as I'm showing here, uh, then run the examples inside that analysis environment. And lastly, you might want to edit the code and add your own analysis. Analysis environments are defined in the uh, configuration file, which is under the binder subfolder of uh, uh, GitHub repository. Uh, we will use in this case, Omero guide Python. Environments uh, have both Jupyter notebooks and scripts. So the examples inside the environments are doubled uh, as Jupyter notebooks and scripts. And uh, we have examples uh, of uh, which you can, which are run in Python, Java and R. So these examples will give you a hand with how to fetch images and metadata and segment them and then compare the segmentation labels with ground truth and much more for images work, but also you would like to work with IDR metadata. And again, the examples give you a lead to how to do that. Just that we have, uh, for example, uh, examples which plot those base, those response curves of compounds working against SARS-CoV-2 and much more. So, uh, more concretely, how to uh, build the analysis environments. Uh, two main ways are on, on the cloud and locally. Uh, so we have uh, explored <clears throat> two um, particular implementations for each of those two ways. Uh, my binder and collab for the cloud base and repo to Docker and Conda for the local one. Um, let's start with the cloud-based. Everything starts inside the GitHub repo. And in our case, uh, it is Omero guide Python as highlighted in the URL here and under this video. Uh, further, you will uh, find inside that repo readme and there you can find all two uh, badges you can click on first for my binder and then secondly for Google Colab. Uh, on which you can click and then the environment will be built for you. Uh, and after a short while, you will be able to use the environment in your browser. Locally, uh, you can use repo to Docker, which is a Python package, which builds a repository into a Docker container on your computer. You will have to install Docker for it if you want. And then, uh, install the repo to Docker, clone the repository CD into it and run repo to Docker space dot. 
the details are in the readme of the Omero guide Python. Uh, lastly, you can use Conda for the local build. Again, uh, this starts with the clone of the repository and seeding into it. This command builds a new Conda environment called Startist. Um, according to the environment YAML recipe, you will activate the Startist and you might choose to install Jupyter or simply run the scripts as already mentioned. And again, details are in the readme of Omero guide Python. So let me show you concretely how it uh, looks like. I am here in the GitHub repository Omero guide Python. Um, in the readme section, you can find the budgies. I right click on uh, the my binder one and this starts a build in the next tab of my browser. Uh, when finished, I will be able to use this environment. Second uh, way to build the environment on the cloud is Google Colab. I can open it in a new tab of my browser. You can see there is some advantage in using Google Colab because you immediately get an environment you can interact with. So let's go through that in Google Colab. I can find a notebook of interest. Uh, for example, this one. This will open an environment I can run the notebook in. And uh, for Google Colab, nevertheless, you will lose some time by executing the first cell, the install cell, which is specific for Google Colab. So I do that, uh, click off the warning, and the install cell is being executed. And so on, I can continue executing the further cells in Google Colab. In the meantime, I can have a look what is uh, my binder doing. It is still uh, going on, and I will use this time to show you the two local ways. So this was uh, my binder in Google Colab. And the two ways to build uh, the environments locally are as highlighted the repo to Docker. So for that, I will go to my local terminal and I have uh, a virtual environment called repo to Docker there. And the last command in the walkthrough is repo uh, to Docker space dot. And this will, this will build uh, the repository into a Docker container. This, will very, this was very fast because I ran the command previously. I will simply take this URL and open it in my browser. And this is my repo to Docker spinning up. And the repo to Docker uh, way of spinning up and I have here my notebooks. I can again click on an example notebook. This time I would not execute the uh, first pip install cell. Inside the notebooks uh, you can navigate and execute the cells by shift uh, enter on Mac or you can always press this button here. And fourth way is the Conda way. I have here my Conda environment already activated. It's called Stardist. And the last command is Jupyter Notebook. If I execute it, again, a new tab opens in my browser. And this is, again, local. Notebooks are under the four notebooks. I can open a, a notebook, and it opens in a next tab. One thing to take care of is uh, for the Conda environment, sometimes you have, are encouraged to uh, exchange the kernel. Kernel is the runtime environment which executes the commands in Jupyter, and you would do it like so, kernel, change kernel, and then possibly Stardist. Um, as you would be encouraged in those concrete videos of the uh, idea analytical workflows. Let me show how you can uh, add your own code. Uh, you can select, for example, a notebook and duplicate it like so, and then work with the duplicate so that you don't overwrite the original example. You can, for example, 
intend to add a new cell which prints the image ID here, like so. And this is easily done by clicking on this plus button as I just done and the new cell is here. And then you go print image ID and then you execute the cell and uh, you are happy, you are successful. And then you can download the new notebook um, with this button here as notebook. Then you will open the downloaded file directly in the in your local text editor as I'm just doing. And you can see that the new cell is here. Now you can, for example, save the notebook to your uh, to the to your local checkout of the uh, Omero Guide Python repository and commit the change. And then, if you build uh, from your own branch, or if you fork the repository, and commit the change to the uh, to to your fork. Then next time when you go to uh, build those notebooks, it will be there if you build from your own branch. So for example, if you go to mybinder.org, you would just put here the URL of your repository and here your branch on which uh, the new commit is uh, to be found and then click on this yellow button and your new notebook will be there uh, from there on. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Bye.